<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Link Live. My name is Marina Mayer, editor in chief of Food Logistics and Supply and Demand Chain Executive. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. Welcome. I'm here with my team. Hi, I'm Brielle. I'm the associate editor. <laughs> I don't think any of us have had enough caffeine today. I didn't no. know that's where you were going. I didn't know you were I know, <laughs> I know. It's, I thought you were still talking. I know, I'm a mess. We've done these so many times and it doesn't get easier, but I'm a I know. <laughs> and I'm the web editor. And, and we are talking about safety because this week is Safe and Sound Week which is just a cool little um, program that OSHA put together. And it was kind of something we felt hit home with a lot of our readers just because everybody mm -hmm. wants to practice employee safety and product safety and plant safety and just overall, you know, safety in general, because that just makes good business practice. Um, so let's kick it off. Uh, first, make sure you go on our website, foodlogistics.com and sdcexec.com to register for SCN Summit, which is August 25th, talking about the state of supply chain industry. And make sure while you're also on our websites that you nominate companies for our upcoming awards. So um, we got that out of the way. So workplace safe, safe and sound week. Um, so we, um, we're in talks with National Safety Council, and they created this program called SAFER, which is Safe Actions for Employee Returns, which is aimed at helping employers prioritize safety as their employees return to traditional work environments. And that's kind of the, the theme for the Safe and Sound Week because, you know, employees are coming back to work, which in some cases buildings have been shut down or it was very minimized. Um, you're trying to protect your people amid a pandemic. Um, so there's lots of things going on and we're seeing a lot of companies that are doing really good things that better acclimate their employees and their workspaces, whether it's a social distancing, whether it's technology, um, especially in the driving industry, you know, we just did this transportation chain uh, video series, you can go to our website to find that too. Um, and one of the things that we talked about in that is driver safety, because a lot of these um, DMVs closed. And so these drivers who have to renew their CDL licenses or even get CDL licenses couldn't do it. And so mm -hmm. how do companies manage a fleet of drivers who are not necessarily completely certified, yet you still need to get product moving. You can't afford to take them off the trucks. So it's kind of like a weird situation. Um, from my standpoint, that was some of the things that I'm seeing in terms of technology or any kind of innovative ways. What are you ladies seeing on your end? Um, from the people that you've talked to? Well, of course, automation is a huge part of it. I mean, we can talk about automation in the warehousing uh, sector and in logistics until, you know, we're blue in the face because it's such a big topic today. Um, but especially in, like, with fleets, that's a huge part of it is, um, you know, there's a lot of technology happening with the trucks themselves that are making it more safe for driving. I mean, think about your car and all the new safety features you have in your you know, um, at home vehicle, it works the same way uh, with with trucking and um, even, you know, rail um, innovation. Um, and then there's actually this interesting uh, co expert column that was posted in, in March on SDC exec, and it's from uh, Quali Qualitrol. And they talk about, you know, the, how to make a safe, but also efficient warehouse. And I think it's really interesting because there, there are a lot of um, forklift accidents and accidents in the warehouse. Uh, this column says that there's a hundred deaths a year with forklifts oh alone. Yeah. So a huge thing is training. That's like the, the number one thing is making sure that everyone is efficiently trained. Um, and then, you know, you have to stay alert um, and then gear is really important as well. You know, investing in, in good safety gear that's like new and sometimes integrated with te technology can really, really help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And then um, I know McKenna, we, we've talked, you know, before about PPE and some of the things that, what are some of the things that you've seen when you talk about PPE with your, your with the people you talk to? And so everybody really stresses the importance of wearing your PPE. So Wisconsin has the mask mandate 
now. And so we're required to wear it. I match it with my outfit. I was gonna say, you, I love the color, the coordination. What I wanna know is do you have a mask in different colors? I do, and in different patterns. So you're like the queen. <laughs> and in different patterns. But like, so when lockdown first happened, we were in Atlanta, we talked about this so many times. Mm -hmm. By the time we got home, all the masks were sold out everywhere. Yeah. And so I just didn't go outside <laughs> because I didn't have a mask at all. And like, you can use the bandanas, but it's not as safe. But everybody that I have talked to has stressed the importance of sanitizing, maintaining the social distance of six feet apart. And then just to like wear your mask correctly because there's still so many misconceptions of it of like, can you have your nose out? Can you just like, yeah. can it be too small or can it be too big? And that is definitely a thing. Like I have a, a large head. And so <laughs> I ordered a mask in a size large because I guess they do that, but it was like falling off my face. And I knew that it wouldn't protect me at all. And there's those masks, I think it's the N95 masks that protect you but they don't protect others as well but i think doing your research on your ppe and finding the best one possible for you for the people around you as right. well from my research the n95 is the best and it does protect other people and you to a, to an extent oh those are the ones i use but they're not cute and they don't match your outfit <laughs> Well, for the reusable mask, so I got a five pack of old, from Old Navy. I was going to say, those are Old Navy because I have a bunch of Old Navy. That's all. I have to wear the kids' Old Navy mask. All right. So small head Marina <laughs> and then big head McKenna. Because <laughs> they're the only ones that fit. So I match, I match my kids. <laughs> but also, like, they're reusable, but you still have to wash them. Yeah. You still have to wash them. And I don't think people are thinking about that. Right. People keep on buying so many of them because they get gross, but you can wash them, hang them to dry. Don't put them in the dryer, but right. you have to wash them on a regular basis. So my boyfriend is a teacher and there is this thing floating around on social media a few weeks ago as schools were making their decisions on whether to go back or not. And they, and this Twitter user gave advice on what to do with the masks and how often you should wash them. She said, wash like three of them every other day. It's just so you have different, so you can use them at different times. That's interesting. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I just wash ours like every, I mean, we don't go out a lot. So when we do go mm -hmm. out, it's like, I just wash it immediately the next day. But again, we have like seven five packs of them because we didn't right. know what was going on with schools we didn't know if they were going back we tried to plan ahead and now we right. have like 25 masks <laughs> so I'm, I'm curious to like what a health expert would say about this like how often can you wear the same mask a re reusable mask before you have to wash it yeah unfortunately there's like way varying opinions and no one really has a clear answer I mean everyone's yeah. opinion different it's just mm -hmm. yeah a very confusing time right I mean, it's just like so that sanitizing your mask sanitizing your hands but also like because you're washing your hands and you're using hand sanitizer so often your hands are going to crack and I that was one of the first things that my friend told me right away she's like you have to moisturize once the Wisconsin mask mandate went in she's like just moisturize as much as you can mm -hmm on your face, on your hands, because that's true. If you have open wounds, it's gonna be, you're gonna co come into contact with something and you could yeah. get sick, not saying that you could get sick with COVID, but you could just get sick in general. I don't know, I think it's interesting that you found a mask in that color because it's such a unique color. I, so I just I'm think that that's <laughs> hilarious that to me. mustard? I like yeah. That. yeah, it's very autumnal. So. Yeah, it's very fall. I'm so I, I just I just think it's funny that <laughs> it's like that particular color. It's not like a white or a black or you know. It's I have several. I would recommend Old Navy. I'm yeah, I I do too. We have little ones that we just got. We have little dogs on them. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, my friend got uh, ones of her dogs. So it's like of like prints of her dog. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> her dogs. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then, and then we, we were talking about this, this website that showed up in my Facebook feed because we were talking about, the three of us were talking about Halloween last week. And so, you know, I've been doing Halloween research and they make these masks <laughs> that are like of scary faces. And mm-hmm. um, I just thought that was kind of funny. I think, you know, mm-hmm. wearing that around could be kind of funny, <laughs> you know, even yeah, if it's not right. Halloween, <laughs> it's like, back off. Right. Um, um, but besides PPE, what are other ways that people can protect themselves too. So, you know, last year and that, that that column that you found, Brielle, is interesting that it was dated in March because that was kind of pre-pandemic, so to speak. So that was kind of before things kind of went haywire. Um, but I know like last year, you know, a lot of the issues with a lot of these plants was plant security, you know, plant mm-hmm. protection, um, how to protect people from, you know, like intruders coming in. You know, we heard of, you know, there are a couple of facilities where workers got laid off or fired and they came back and they started shooting people and, you know, they had access to the building. So plant safety was a big thing last year, you know, mm-hmm. in, in installing thumbprint things, um, you know, especially when you're dealing with food, you know, and you're separating the allergens from the non-allergens, you know, mm-hmm. certain employees can't cross over to other sides of the facilities um, mm-hmm. for that reason. So that, that was a thing of last year. I think this year obviously is, is people but at the same time, it's still plant. You still have to make sure your plant, your, your equipment is sanitized and mm-hmm. cleaned and washed. Um, you know, companies are, from what I've heard from people, these food manufacturers, especially, and, and even the pharmaceutical manufacturers, you know, they've implemented more rigorous cleaning schedules. So it's not mm-hmm. just every other day, it's every right. day. Well, um, just look at the grocery stores, all the grocery stores are closing in earlier mm-hmm. so that they can sanitize every day. Right. And even before my kids' schools went to all e-learning, there was a hybrid option which we opted into. And so the two, the day and every Wednesday, the school would shut down. It would be e-learning for everybody, and that's when they would clean and sanitize. Wow. And then they would clean again on that Sunday before mm. the kids return. So you know that's like you know, and they they implemented. And I compare it to you know if it were a facility, like they weren't allowed to use their lockers, they weren't allowed to share desks. So they had to literally walk around with a backpack full of stuff and that was their life. Everything was in it. They couldn't do anything with it. But then you think about things like shoes. You know, I've been in facilities where you've had to rinse your shoes. You've had to change your shoes and put on like specific work boots. Right. Um, I would imagine with rubber soles and, and the, 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 you know, data that we've seen carrying, you know, spores of the coronavirus on it. Like I would imagine that would still be something that they would be implementing um, mm-hmm. or at least following through on. Um, you know, and again, back to the truck driver thing, you know, I've seen a lot of things where, you know, they're implementing technology that literally tracks the package itself and shows you results of how many people touched that particular package um, with fingerprints. And I think that is so key. And I know we have talked about this on previous lives because it's, it's key when, you know, people do get sick and you have mm-hmm. to do the contact tracing backwards. Well, you know, there, it leaves a trail of mm-hmm. here's the 10 or so people that touch this package. You may want to let them know. <laughs> right. Um, so I don't know. I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, you know, and obviously COVID, it just, it just adds this extra element of, of risk. And, um, you know, in terms of ta- employees' tasks, I feel like employees' tasks have changed to some degree. I mean, all of our jobs, everybody in the industry, regardless um, mm-hmm. of where you sit, your job has been impacted by this it's been right. up and down. I mean, we're all doing things we never were going to do back in march um right you know i'm a traditional print journalist i've never sat in front of a video and <laughs> and talked to people i know and i couldn't have ever dreamed about doing link live until- it, it was exactly yeah. so it's it's opened opportunities at the same time you know it's opened opportunities for other mm-hmm. companies and so you know, when it comes to like maintaining workplace health and safety, you know, there are a lot of people that are still remote, but they are people like, you know, our Wisconsin office who are still bringing people back in. So, you know, you know, Wisconsin, you know, they implemented the mask rule. <laughs> Was that Harvey or Tanner? They did not like our conversation. <laughs> um, you know, what, what do you see? McKenna, you're in the office. Brielle and I are remote. From mm-hmm. your vantage point, how do you compare working in the office now compared to how it was, you know, back in February? I think everyone is a little bit more timid. I don't know if that's the best word, but like we 
I would used to just like burst into people's office and sit down right next to them and talk to them. While well, now we all like stand in the doorway and just be like very respectful. It's so different because we're journalists and we can work remotely. So that wasn't a huge transition for a lot of people. But I think the talking aspect, or I wouldn't even say the community aspect because we still see each other, we still talk to each other, but it's we're keeping our distance mm-hmm. our time. And that's the hardest part. And I think that is something that people are re- really struggling with during the pandemic is like mental health, emotional health, and that yeah. goes safe and sound week. Because like you're having this global pandemic, which is having an effect on every single person. And then on top of that, like you could hit me having these mental health issues and that's only going to make it worse, especially if you're not able to talk to people or go outside Mm -hmm. or see like people that usually help you feel better because some people don't work that well virtual session while it's really beneficial for everyone. And so that's another part of safe and sound week. It's just like taking care of yourself mentally too. Mm -hmm. I think mean, that's a very good point because I have seen a lot more companies and a lot more surveys that show that companies are putting their people kind of more at the top of the list where before, you know, they cared about their people, but they also cared about other elements as well. Mm-hmm. And I think since March, I've seen a lot of companies say, no, my people come first. If I yeah. have to shut down to protect my people, I will. And mm-hmm. I think there's something to be said for that, especially in this industry, because, you know, everybody in this industry wants to be a part of this industry. You know, it's, it's yeah. people of very passionate people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that passion is contagious and and to protect your people. I mean, what good is your company if you don't Mm -hmm. have people who respect you and care for you and are well enough to to work? Um, So I think the mental health part is 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 a very important discussion um, Mm -hmm. in our industry because you you don't know. You know, there's a lot of people who work, you know, differently. I mean, Riel and I are remote and, you know, our states are similar in how they handled the mask rule and and how they've handled everything. And so, you know, we haven't seen people very rarely and we haven't gone out at all. And I'm thankful that it's summer, but when the weather starts to turn, you know, Mm -hmm. who knows what that brings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a good, that's a good point. Um, Brielle, from your vantage point, you know, you, you talk to people on your podcasts on, uh, on, on link, what, what kind of things are you seeing when you talk to people about some of the things they're doing to better protect companies itself um i'm i would say you know just like what everyone else is doing most thing most people are working remotely um in ways they never have before and it'll probably um continue on that way in the future um yeah and then like reducing interaction in the warehousing so a lot of people are spaced out differently they're they're reorganizing the warehouse in general you're fine you're fine (laughs) (laughs) He had to get his point across too. Um, yeah, so I think I think worker safety is important. I think employee safety, or it's all the same. Equipment safety, um, product mm-hmm. safety. You know, product safety is interesting too because, you know, there for a while, FDA wasn't allowed to go on site and do audits. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not the case now. I think that has started to change and um, we'll touch on it a little bit in our, um, well, not a little, a little bit, we will be touching on it in our, logistics October issue on risk mitigation. But, um, you know, some of the things I've heard is it, it, that puts a little, you know, extra onus on the companies, you know, whether they're producing food or pharmaceuticals, even anything that requires any kind of, you know, credibility to it, you know, puts the extra onus on them because you don't want recalls. You don't want bad things to happen. You don't want to hurt people, um, or make them sick. And so, you know, in addition to a pandemic, they're dealing with things that are common day to day, occurrences so um one thing i think is that's really interesting that i mean there's a lot of tech and automation happening in the warehouse and logistics but um you know artificial intelligence is pulling all of that together and kind of reorganizing the business and you think of that in terms of you know predicting your business where you can um have better roi um and you know reducing your bottom line but another way is looking at 
all of, of the warehouse and where there's common pain points and where there's common slips and falls and injuries. Mm. And they, they can kind of reevaluate based on that. Um, interesting. So, so yeah, it's really, it's really interesting to see the way machine learning can help us in so many different ways. And it could really reduce a lot of injuries. Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Like, I, were you going to say something? Or? Well, I was just wondering if automation could eventually take over the places where falls happen the most. So there are a lot of ways, you know, that the robotics companies themselves, most of them, they don't, they know that people are scared of having automation replace their jobs. So they're trying to help companies find ways that the robotics systems can work for them and help right. them instead of just replacing jobs. And so one of the things that they really push when they um, are working with companies is like, look at, at where, you know, situations like that are happening and how can we stop that? Like, how can we use these systems to stop injuries? And then another thing is ergonomics, like um, reducing um, jobs that are super repetitive and are, are injuring workers, not in terms of like, oh, slips and falls, but like doing that motion so many times is so stressful on the body. Could a robot uh, fit in here and, and help the situation a little bit better? Right. Yeah. No, those are good points. I think it's, it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the year, you know, pans out with the way companies handle things, especially if another yeah. resurgence comes. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, this industry has done a great job of, of beating the odds and kind of keeping things moving. So, um, you know, we thank the industry for that, everybody that's involved. Um, and just keep, keep protecting those people and the product and the plants. So um, for more safe and sound week information, you can always go to foodlogistics.com, sdcexec.com. You can, while you're on there, register for SCN Summit August 25th on State of the Supply Chain Industry. We have some great, great speakers. Um, you can go on there and nominate some awards and you can sign up to receive our e-newsletters. You can follow us on social media and um, you can also find some valuable expert columns on these and other discussions as well as um, articles and research reports and case studies. So mm -hmm. we have everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're the place to be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so thank you ladies for your insights and input and thank you everybody for viewing. We'll see you again next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central. Thank Bye. you everybody. Be safe. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.